Chris, I should say something. Good morning, everybody. Why don't we uh, all come in from the snack table and find our seats? And have, have a real meal, right? Yeah. Before we start, why don't, uh, why don't we all stand together and turn to the person next to you and say, hey, it's good to see you. <laughs> well, before we start, I have a newer song we want to kind of intro to you and then we'll come back around to it, so I'll just go and go through the verse and chorus. There was a moment when the lights went out, it's called All Hail King Jesus, when death had claimed its victory. The King of Love had given up his life, the darkest day in history. cross they made for sinners for every curse his blood atoned one final breath and it was finished but not the end we could have known for the earth began to shake Father, we just thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for your goodness and for everything that you've done in our lives. I was just thinking today, um, you know, I like to come with a mind and a heart of thankfulness, and I'm like, man, God, you've done so much for me, and what have I done for you? All I can give you is my worship. All I can do is come to you and tell you thank you. So God, we thank you today, Father, and we worship you, God. We just pour out our worship over you, Father, because you are so good and you are so worthy.
Yeah. 
It's filled with your glory. It's filled with your glory. My whole life is filled. My whole life is filled. I'm filled with your glory. I'm filled with your glory. All right, at this moment, we would like to call the kids up. Come on, kids. If you're going to class today, up front. <laughs> Thanks, Bill. You round them up for me. We're just, why don't you guys stretch your hands out to these guys here, these warriors of Christ, huh? Yeah, so Father, we thank you so much, God, that the little ones at our church do, do not serve a little God. They serve the same Holy Spirit who has the power over sickness and death. God, we just ask that you blast them today. God, wreck them in your love. And just change them. We just give them to you, God. They're yours. Amen. All right, guys, have fun in class.
Thank you, Jesus.
Corinthians 13 just uh, just like just is hitting me and so 1st Corinthians 13 if I could speak all languages of earth and angels but didn't love others I would be only a noisy gong or a clanging sing- symbol if I had the gift of prophecy and I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others it would be nothing if I had gave everything to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it, but if I didn't love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way, it is not irritable, it, does not, it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up, never, uh, never loses faith. It is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge becomes useless, but love will last forever. So I think just today, we just need to reach out and, and in our own way, just worship and tell God how much we love Him. And however much we give to God, God is going to give you back more than you could even imagine. So today, let's just receive the love of Jesus Christ. I love, I love the piece of that scripture that says, through all the circumstances, His love never fails. And I feel it so heavy on my heart this morning that there are people here this morning that need to feel His love. Whether it's a sickness, whether it's a marriage, whether it's a life, whether it's a healing, whether it's a breakthrough, whatever it might be. And you're, and you're sitting here this morning in this place of uncertainty about His love. And we're, we're going to talk about intimacy later with the Lord because there's something that happens as we draw close to Him. We begin to feel His love on us. And so I want to ask you this morning, if you're, if you're here, as, as we go back into worship, if you're here, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, and you're saying, you know what, I just need to know the love of the Father again. Or I need to be reminded that, yes, He still loves me despite everything I'm going through, despite what I'm facing, despite what I'm encountering. I want you to come to the front, and I want to pray for you. Because it's when we allow His love to shower us from the top of our head to the bottom of His feet, man, it changes everything. You get breakthrough in your marriage. You get breakthrough in your health. You get breakthrough in your finances. Breakthrough in your relationship. Breakthrough in your business. Breakthrough wherever. The altars are open. Come forward. Posture yourself. Yield yourself. And let's allow His love to shower each and every one of us this morning. Amen. Let's go back into worship this morning.
open our hearts to you.
love on you this morning. We're here because you want to love on us this morning. We're here to experience your love this morning. We're here to be reminded of your love this morning. We're here to draw near to you this morning. We're here to encounter you this morning. We're here to see your face this morning. Reveal yourself to us this day, oh God. In order for heaven to come to earth, it starts with me. heaven in my life before heaven around me is established. We thank you for your love. How you love us. Oh, how you love us. Despite my faults, despite my failures, despite my shortcomings, you love never fails. No matter where we're at today, no matter what has happened in our day, no matter what is happening in our life, no matter the circumstances we find ourselves in, your love never fails. Your love is there to pick me up when I am down, to heal me when I'm hurting, to restore when there's a, a gap in my life, to, to mend the broken heart. And that is what your love is here to do this morning. And so, Father, today, as the body of Christ, we say we accept your love today. We embrace your love today. We need your love today. Forgive us for not embracing it every day of our lives, but we just need it this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Can we put our hands together for Jesus this morning? Do one more thing with me. Why don't we stand to your feet real fast? And uh, if you are here for the very first time, would you mind just shooting your hand up? Any, anybody at all here for the very first time? We have a couple up front. We have a few around here. Church, can we put our hands together for them? Thank you for hanging out with us this morning. For the next uh, 60 seconds, why don't you say hi to somebody around you, especially those new people if you've never seen them before. Hug a neck. All right. Go ahead and be seated. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Bro. Well, we're going to look at two... Uh, passages of scripture this morning and uh, it's it's interesting as as things happen during the course of the week God tends to redirect your steps amen and uh, we are just we're just going to go with the flow and, th and that's what we're that's what we're doing here I want to speak to you the two words that have been on my heart all week is is I guess it's more more phrase is intimacy with the Lord and image of God image of God, intimacy with the Lord. And uh, so the two passages of scripture I want to look at this morning is 2 Corinthians uh, 3.18 and then Jeremiah 29.12 through 14. And here's, here's the deal as we go on our walk with the Lord. And, it, and it, it works out like this. We have been designed, we have been created to worship. We have been designed, we have been created for relationship. But too often in our life, we, we neglect the relationship and the worship piece simply because we forget that we are created out of His image and out of His likeness. And so if we are a people that have been created out of His image and out of His likeness, then our intimacy with the Lord is unhindered. Let me say that again. If we remember that we have been created out of the image and likeness of Him, then our intimacy with the Lord is unhindered or undisturbed. Because this is why we were created. 
And so oftentimes it's not our sin, it's not our past, it's not our, our relationships, our finances, it's, it's not any of the stuff that is keeping us from intimacy with Him. It's the realization that we keep forgetting that we're actually created out of His image and likeness. From, from Genesis 1, you see it all played out throughout the whole Bible. We are created out of His image and out of His likeness. So if you look at 2 Corinthians 3, I'm going to actually read 16 through 18, but we're going to focus on 18. But 16 says this, But the moment, say the moment, moment. one turns to the Lord with an open heart. Say open heart. The veil is lifted and they see. Now I'm going to rephrase it. The veil is lifted and I see. I see. When I turn to the Lord, when I go to Him with an open heart and say, Jesus, do whatever it is you want to do in my life. The veil is pulled away and all of a sudden I see. In order to have eyes to see, in order to have ears to hear, our hearts must come before Him opened, yielded, surrendered, not in control, because this is how... This is how God changes us. This is how He encounters us. This is how He, he transforms us with His love, with His power, with His might. Now the Lord I'm referring to is the Holy Spirit. And wherever He is, there is freedom. In other words, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Whatever you're facing today, if you remember that you're made out of His image and out of His likeness, there is going to be freedom in your life. Freedom in your thinking, freedom in your words, freedom in your perspective. And this is why we see Christians live in kingdom, victorious lives, versus Christians live in normal, ordinary, uh, hard lives. Because they haven't grasped the idea that they are made out of His image. And if you're made out of His image, everything you think is out of His image. Everything you say is out of his image. Everything you hear is out of his image. Everything you breathe is out of his image. Everything you do in life is out of the image and likeness of God, because that's how we were created. And so you see people wandering around all the time that are, woe is me, and there's never joy on their face, and, and you can't understand why their life is upside down in turmoil, and it's because we haven't allowed the image and likeness of God to penetrate us, because when it penetrates us, it draws us near to Him, and our intimacy level with the Lord skyrockets. David said in Psalms, and we're going to get to it in a minute, but God, when can I see you? He understood that he was created out of his image. He understood that where he was at in present David time was not where he wanted to be. And so he kept drawing near. He kept drawing near. He kept realizing that his intimacy with the Lord is so rich and so deep that there has to be more. He wasn't satisfied with where he was at. He kept wanting to push and push and go and go to see what might happen. Verse 18 now. We can all draw close, say all draw close, all draw close. to Him with the veil removed from our faces. And with no veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. For we are being transformed and transfigured into His image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. And this glorious transformation comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. We all can draw close because what we see in the mirror is not Josh. What we see in the mirror is not what Facebook says of me. What we see in the mirror is not what the news says of me. What we say in the mirror is not what my family says of me. What I see in the mirror is Jesus. What I see in the mirror is a little Christ, an imitator of Christ, because I've allowed his fire and his power and his presence to transform me, to change me from the inside out. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, you're not looking at the mirror as you see you, faults, failures, issues, circumstances. You see you as somebody who has been 
transformed from glory to glory. It's all out of his image. This is why we were created. We weren't created to to just sit here and do life as normal. We weren't created to to sit here and just kind of manage our way to heaven. I've talked about the managing your way to heaven before. That's kind of what we do as Christians. We just hang out in our own box, right? Like, Like, I'm okay, Jack. I'm not comfortable speaking to just some random person I see on the street. But yet, in order for us to see the world around us transformed, we got to break out of our comfort zone and out of our box because that's how the world's going to change, right? If a whole bunch of Christians are standing around in this box saying, this is my comfort zone, I know I'm good with God, I'm going to work on my relationship with God, that's great, but there's a whole other piece to the puzzle that we're missing. And it's until the, the body of Christ gets set ablaze the world around us will never change. Look at these scriptures on, on his image. We all know them. Genesis 127. God created man and woman in his own image. In the image of God, he created him, male and female, just in case we didn't know it. He said in his own image twice in one verse. Genesis 5, 1. In the day when God created man, he made him the likeness of God. Matthew 5, 48. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. 1 Corinthians 15, 49, we bear the image of the man of heaven. That's the image we're bearing. It's Jesus. Jesus was created in the image of his father. So are we, like Jesus, created in the image of the father. We don't bear your family tree, your DNA sprout. We don't bear any of that. What we bear is the man in heaven. And I want to spend some time on this this morning because it's important that we understand that we have the image of God in us. When we speak, it's his words. When we think, it's his mind. When we hear, it's his ears. We're not doing anything anymore in the natural. We're doing it in the supernatural. And when we operate in the supernatural, that's when heaven comes down, invades our life, and in turn bleeds over to the life of everybody around us. Look at another scripture, Colossians 3, 9 to 10. Put on the new self, which is being renewed in the knowledge after the image of the creator. Romans 8, 29, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Do you see where I'm going this morning? Everything that we do in life is birthed after the image of the father. Image of his son. Image of his son of the one who created us and called us out of darkness into the marvelous light. Too often, if we really have to break down our, our, our intimacy level with the Lord, it's, it's strictly got caught up in our identity, right? Like, I can't draw near to him because there's something in my life that's keeping me. And really what it is, it's the fact that we haven't allowed his image to come into us. We're not comfortable with saying, Lord, I know I'm created in your image, therefore I'm going to walk in your image. Therefore, I'm going to act like I'm not comfortable with it because of all the stuff going on in my life. But he says from day one all the way through to the end of the book, we are created out of his image. Walk like it. Act like it. Talk like it. Think like it. Breathe like it. Because then when it comes to drawing near, the drawing near is so much easier, so much deeper, so much more incredible, so much more powerful, because there's no identity crisis that we're looking at every time we go to the Word in the morning. I saw a quote not long ago, I don't remember where I saw it, but it says, every morning when you get up out of bed and you're looking in the mirror, say, good morning, Jesus. Jesus. Because that's who you're created to be. A Christian is a little Christ, an imitator of Christ. It's about, it's about encountering his love that way. Oh, how he loves us. It's his love that transforms us. It's his love that reminds us that we've been created out of his image. Created out of his likeness. In turn, the intimacy part is 
is a no-brainer. Look at Jeremiah 29, 12 to 14 with me. Now read this scripture with me with the idea that now we fully grasped his image. We don't have an image crisis anymore. We don't have an identity issue anymore. We now understand that his image is inside of us. And it says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. How can we expect the father's ears to be turned towards us if we don't understand that he's actually in us? How can we expect to cry out to him when we don't understand his image is what we've been created for? That's how we live. That's how we breathe. That's how we move. That's how we have our being. And I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations, from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away. See, there's a whole bunch of I wills in there as we begin to draw near to him. But too often it's our, it's our complex of ourselves that keeps us from drawing near. It's people's opinion, it's people's mindset, it's people's perspective. Maybe your life is just so hard that it's, Hard to think this way, hard to act this way, hard to believe this way, hard to, hard to see God for who he is, hard to see you for who you are. You see, we're kingdom kids. We're not, we're not connected to a family on earth. We're connected to the family in heaven. And there's something so beautiful about this drawing near because the more you draw near, the more intimate he becomes with you, the more you hear his voice. The more he encounters you, the more he gives you dreams and visions, the more he speaks to you, the more he highlights things to you, the more he, he guides and directs you, the more he opens doors to you. But we get caught up so much as intimacy is all we can say versus the waiting. Our relationship with God is not based off what I can get out of my mouth. It's not based off my to-do list. It's not based off of all the things I need to get done in my life or prayers I'm believing for. Intimacy with God is a relationship, which means it's a two-way street, which means we have to sometimes just wait. We have to sometimes just come and sit in his presence and allow him to speak and allow him to minister and allow him to touch you and allow him to change you because too often we go through our prayer times in the morning and we check it off because we've just spent an hour with him but really it's been an hour of me and not an hour of him. Your relationship with your spouse is based off of how well you work together. Not how well you drive the ship. Not how much you say, not how much you do. It's, it's a two-way street. It's a give and take. Waiting in the presence of God does more for you than as much things as you can say. No amount of books you can read will change it. No amount of worship will change it. No amount of anything. But when we come to him, yielding and surrender and say, Jesus, I'm here. What do you want to say to me? What do you want to do with me? What do you want to change in me? That's when he comes and fills you and lights you on fire and highlights things and reveals things and, and speaks. Because he wants to. He's up there hanging out waiting to, to come down and minister and touch and, and give you good gifts. We're his kids. He's got gifts for us. He's got amazing gifts for us. He's got incredible gifts for us. But we never get to open the gifts because we're too busy doing this. Too busy walking around, whoa, God is good, hallelujah. <laughs> like, I was having a conversation with somebody a couple of weeks ago, just random out in the, and we were, gave him a touch card. I don't know how we got on the topic of church or whatever. And he's like, why are Christians seeming so down? I'm like, excuse me? We're not down. We're happy. Yeah. And then the more I thought about it, I'm like, you know what? You know how many Christians you encounter in life that are just woe is me? 
Like they forget that the joy of the Lord is actually their strength. They forget that Jesus went to the cross so I have an opportunity at eternity. I mean, like, like well, what am I missing here? It's not about what we can get out. It's about coming into his presence and saying, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. But in order for it to happen out there, God, I want it in my life. I need it in my life. I'm here to draw closer to you. I'm here to just drink from the cup that you have. I'm here to eat whatever you want to give me. I am here just to see you. And he comes and talks and does and highlights and gives all the stuff. Because there's more. Right. Look at some of these other scriptures on intimacy. Proverbs 8, 17. Searching and searching leads to finding. Searching and searching leads to finding. This is not a one and done operation. We are not NCAA basketball freshman college players. We are here for the long haul. We're not coming in and leaving. We are going to come and we're going to press in and we're going to search until he says and opens and downloads all that he has for us. Searching and searching until we find means you got to be quiet too. I don't know about you, but for the longest time, I would come to, to quiet time in the morning. And I'd be like, God, you're good. And God, we bring this before you. And God, we bring that before you. And God, I lift up this person. God, I lift up that person. God, please do this. And, and it's all right. We need to do that because it's a relationship, right? Like it's two ways. It's worth, worth saying stuff. He's saying, but then I would say, in Jesus' name, amen. Computer closed, Bible closed, off for the day. And he's like, wait, I got something. You're going to wish you had it today. And then I'll never forget the first time I allowed him to speak. God, you know my heart. You know what's going on in my life. I lay them before you. Now, what do you want to say to me? Oh, my word. You want to talk about a, a, a level of intimacy I'd never encountered before. Because we're given the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the person that we are. Like, like, how much more intimate can you get? He literally created you after his image. If we were ever wondering how much he loved us, if we were ever wondering how much we were created like him, it's that scripture. I created you out of the image and likeness of me. I created your, your knowledge after me. I created everything you do after me. How much more should we sit there and just say, just speak to me? James 4.8, he's waiting for me. Let's go there, James 4.8. This is one of my favorite scriptures. We all know it. Move your heart closer and closer to God, and he will come even closer to you. But make sure you cleanse your life and keep your heart pure and stop doubting. See, coming to the Lord requires us clean hands and a pure heart. It's when we cleanse ourselves of all unrighteousness, if we ask for forgiveness for the things we've said, looked at, done, he's then able to speak because there's nothing standing in the way anymore. There's no gap. There's no broken communication because we've, we've gotten right with him. It's interesting, he says, stop doubting. Because I think a lot of times when we come to him, it's, it's, God, I want this. Man, I really hope it. Now let's look at that in a husband, wife, mom, dad setup. If I'm drawing closer and closer to my wife and I say, Bernice, I would like you to do X, Y, and Z. Or can we go blah, or whatever it might be. I have got 1,000% assurance that it will come through. What? 1,000. There's not a doubt in my mind. But yet when we have the same conversation with our Heavenly Father, all of a sudden we're like, I wonder. I wonder. Doubting in the relationship will hinder 
a deeper relationship. Doubting in our time with him will hinder his voice to us. We're not called to doubt. We're called to trust. We're called to put our hope. We're called to put our confidence. That's why it says, come boldly before the... Because we know whatever we ask, it will happen. Isaiah tells us that everything that is spoken, the word of the Lord, it will come to pass. It will come back, not come back until it's done what it was set out to do. That is the word of the Lord. That is the promises in his, in his word. That is the promises over our relationship, over our circumstances, over everything that God is asking us to do. That is the promise. Stop doubting. Psalms 145, 18, the Lord is near to all who call on him. He is there. He's there. He's just waiting for us to, to draw near. So then in turn, he can draw near to us. Psalms 42, 2, my soul thirst pants and longs for the living God. I want to come and see the face of God. Psalms 148, 8, let me hear of your unfailing love each morning. I am trusting you. Show me where to walk. I give myself to you. Intimacy is all about waiting. Being quiet and waiting. We want to go to a new level with him. We just got to wait in his presence. Yeah, but my day is this. Get up a little bit earlier. Stay up a little bit later. It's amazing if we, if, we, if we focus on a day, focus on a week, on where we can make more time for God, how much time we actually end up making. And what you're getting out of the week and what you're hearing out of the week and what you're feeling him say and do and he begins to direct your steps. Isaiah 40, 31, those who wait on the Lord, what does it say? Renew your strength. If you're weak this morning, start waiting a little bit more. Mount up with wings like eagles. You will run and not be weary. You will walk and not faint. There is something so powerful, so supernatural that takes place in the waiting. Healing, restoration, strength. Renewed vision, renewed hope, renewed direction. All because we're waiting. You're not doing. You're waiting. Contrary to what the world will tell you, doing isn't always the best thing. I got to do, I got to do, I got to do because God will help me. And, but no, he's saying, just hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to renew you. I want to fill you. I want to speak to you. I want to I heal you. I want to give you fresh insight and, 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 and new vision and new stamina to go the extra mile. But wait. Psalm 62.5. My soul waits silently for God. My expectation is from Him. My soul waits silently for God. This, this whole idea of intimacy is a very, uh, very personal thing to me because of the journey I've been on. It's hard to communicate it the way that I feel like it should be communicated. My prayer, my hope, my desire is that we all experience a new level of intimacy with him. Here's the thing about intimacy. Intimacy leads to more. Intimacy leads to deeper. Intimacy leads to unveiled eyes. And I never realized it before, but intimacy is also directly related to the image of God. Like, if we don't understand that piece, we will never go to a new level of intimacy with him. And God is here wanting to, to take us to that new level. I read a quote this week, and I'm going to read it to you, and this is what I think intimacy is defined as. Incredible, incredible quote. Intimacy is not asking God for all things, but simply desiring God for himself. Let me read it again. Intimacy is not asking God for all things, but simply desiring God for himself. God, I'm here because I want more of you. God, I'm here because I just, you know what? You're my best friend. When my world is falling, 
down around me when I don't know if I should go left or right or frontwards or backwards or jump up and down or lay down or whatever. I just want you for you. Because it's his feeling of, 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 of that void that turns all your perspectives around, your outlook around, your destiny around, your purpose around, your vision around, your hope around. Psalms 91.1, dwell in the secret place. Then we shall abide under the shadow of the Most High. Dwelling is living in that place of intimacy. Abiding under the shadow is safety. Our relationship with him starts here. We don't have to hope he does anything different. We don't have to hope he, he, he follows up on his promises. It starts with me. My prayer is twofold today, is that we will understand his image. We will understand that that's how we were created. The second prayer is that our intimacy will go much deeper to places like never before. My prayer each morning, like David wrote, my soul thirsts for you. It pants, it longs for the living God. I want to see you face to face. Like, I, I don't know what else to do. Like, I'm so hungry as the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs for you. Like, like this is the state I live in. Because without it, I've got nothing. Without it, there's no future. There's no hope. Without it, there's no reason to get out of bed. Without it, there's no reason to try anymore. My prayer is that our prayer each day is, I am so thirsty. I am so hungry. I am so desperate. And it's in that place that he becomes to speak, to wait. Open my ears, O Lord, that I might hear you. Open my eyes that I might see you. Open my mind that I might understand you. Open my heart that I might feel you. And what I want to challenge you with this morning or, or say to you this morning or encourage you with this morning, allow his love to penetrate. Allow his love to penetrate. Because it's in the penetration, his likeness changes. You stand face to face to him, looking in the mirror. You're not looking at Josh. You're not looking at Facebook's view of you. You're not looking at media's view of you. You're looking at Jesus. Good morning, Jesus. My prayer is that I, I demonstrate you. I show you off this morning. It takes a lighting on fire in order for that to happen. Because if we're not lit on fire, we're not causing change around us. I heard a quote this week by Bill Johnson. <clears throat> I, I, I can't quote it because I heard it via somebody else, but something along these lines. The reason God wants to light us on fire and encounter us is so that our excitement level goes through the roof so that the world around us is changed. Because right now we're living in a day and age where the world is, is, is crumbling. People are dying left and right and they're going to hell. And if something doesn't shake the body of Christ, the world is not changed. The world's not transformed. Believe me, I tried to do it on my own one time, and it was a disaster. Maybe that's where the joy comment came from. God is wanting to encounter and light his people on fire so that I can experience him and take the gospel. This is all about souls at the end of the day. No matter what message we speak on, no matter what series we speak on, no matter what we're doing, it is all about souls. And if we're not out there spreading the news of Jesus. If we're not spreading the gospel, if we're not talking about the cross, nothing changes around us. Because then all we're doing is talking about an experience I had. 
You can't take that away from me, but it's not going to change them. The experience that I have had with God is, is so that I can go to a new level. Glory to glory, so that when I go out to the streets, I'm taking the gospel with me, so that they encounter the love of Jesus. Doug talked about last night, or last week, a scripture in our, in our leaders meeting about, at the end of the day, it's all about the gospel. That's all we have. That's all you have. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel changes hearts. The gospel changes lives. And if we are going out with anything other than that, we're in trouble. My prayer this morning for you, for me, for Redmond, Ben, Madras, Prineville, Sisters, Central Oregon, is that the gospel and the love of Jesus changes us in such a way that our intimacy level goes deeper so that when we go out there, there's nothing standing in the way of us. Amen? Let's stand together this morning.